Hi there, welcome to another Autodesk Inventor video from me, Steve Bedder. So we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at Autodesk Inventor's iLogic rules and how we can use iLogic to drive some design automation within our 3D digital prototypes. So subscription users that have got iLogic installed will have an extra parameters dialog. But we can still work with the standard parameters dialog, as I've done here. You can see I've got this model. And uh, what I've done, I've just applied some parameter names for uh, for some of the sketch geometry. So for things like thickness and the length of the edges, the short edge and the long edge that we can see there. So as I say, we can use the, the standard inventor parameters dialog box and we can still use the parameters that we create in them, but we can use them inside of the iLogic rules just really quickly and easily using the iLogic ribbon bar. You can see there's a number of options there. But the first thing that we want to do is add a new rule. And this rule is going to control the notch that we've got in the middle of this bracket. Now we've got a whole host of, um, of options within, the, within our new rule dialog. On the left hand side we've got all the different parameters and features that we can automate. And in the center there you can see all of the parameters and features that we've got in the current model. And what I want to do is just start using some logic in here to start to control whether that notch is, um, is suppressed or not suppressed. And I'm going to do this by using the length parameter and specify that if the length is less than or equal to 450 millimeters, then, just use the then button down at the bottom, extrusion 2 and extrusion 3 should be suppressed. Now just by right clicking on extrusion, on extrusion 2 there and specifying capture current state, it placed all the details for that particular feature in the edit window there. So you can see how, see how this logic is starting to build up. We've got if length is less than or great or equal to 450 millimeters, then feature extrusion 2 is active equals true. But actually we want this to be false because we don't want it to be active. If it's less than 450 mil, we essentially want this um, this notch suppressed. But we're all, we're also doing at the same time is setting the number of holes that are in the uh, the feature pattern. Now, if it's not less than or equal to 450 mil, i.e., it's over that size, then what do we want it to do? So in that case, we're just going to copy the text and this time set the is active to be true on both of those features and the number of holes to be two. So we've set the the logic there. Now all we need to do is just check that the logic rule is there, which it is, you can see it's there on the left hand side called notch and using our iLogic parameters dialog you can see that there's a driving rule against the number of holes parameter so that now when we come and change that length from 600 millimeters down to 400 millimeters it instantly updates so the notches have disappeared and also the numbers of holes have also reduced as well now if we increase this from the size from 400 millimeters let's change that up so we're going from 400 millimeters there let's go up to 650 millimeters and the notches and the holes reappear and you'll notice that by changing the values within the iLogic parameters dialog box everything is instant um, by using that we've got that immediate update little tick box that means that any changes that we make are immediately made. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new iLogic parameter, this time called mat for material. And the type of parameter it's going to be is called is a string. And a string can be a list of text. We can also have model parameters and we can also have booleans, booleans being yes no values. But in this case I'm going to specify this as a um, as a list so that we can choose from between three different materials and I've forgotten to add a material in there so I can just right click and say edit and add the copper material and this allows me to select the material from this list and you'll notice that as I change it the value changes as well but again we want to add a little bit of logic into this so I'm going to create a new rule and this new rule is actually going to automatically drive the material that's being used so in this case we're going to drive it based on the thickness so if the thickness of the bracket is a certain value, we want it to be a particular material. 
So I'm going to write them some logic based on the parameters. So if thickness, and again using the rule syntax, I can just quickly get hold of any of these maths operands and parameters. And I'm going to say if the thickness is greater than or equal to four millimeters, then the material should equal aluminium 6061. Now you'll notice that the names that I'm using here are the same as the, as the names that we've got inside of our eye properties, our material eye properties. If it's not greater than or less than 4 millimeters, though we want to use a slightly stronger material, in this case it's going to be mild steel. And then we just end that if statement. You've got to make sure that you add the end if in there. If there are any issues with any of the syntax that you've placed within the, the dialog there, iLogic will tell you when you click on the OK button. Now because we're setting the material for this, not only do we want to set the colour, but we also actually want to set the physical properties material as well. So using the properties on the left hand side there, you can see I can select the eye property material and just say that that equals our parameter mat. And then the final thing to do here is just add a document update. And all that's going to do is just going to do an update all on the actual document which will update the eye properties. So now that we've got our material rule, let's go and change that thickness and you can see it's currently at 7 millimeters, and we're at aluminium 6061. Let's change that down to 2 millimeters, and actually there you can see that we've, uh, we've come up with a slight error um, but all it is is just down to my typing. So we can quickly come in and edit the rule and all it is, it's just when I'm missing a space because the name it couldn't find within Inventor's Materials. So now that we're at 2mm, we're now at mild steel. Let's up that to 8mm. You'll notice there in the background that the model has also changed and our material has now also changed to aluminium 6061. Let's go and have a look at the eye properties for this and see what's going on there. And again, you can see that in the physical properties, we've now got aluminium 6061 change that back, specify that at 3 mil. it's changed within the parameters dialog, has it changed within our eye properties? Yep, it sure has, we've now got steel mild as our chosen property. So this is automating tasks that a design engineer would have to do manually, so you're adding the, the knowledge into the models reducing the amount of work and the amount of effort that needs to be done by a design engineer. If you've got standards based design within the business, let iLogic take care of that for you. The final rule that we're going to create here is a thickness warning and this is to make sure that our design engineers don't over engineer these brackets. We don't want them to go over 7.1 millimeters, or actually it's going to be 7 millimeters. So we're going to say if it's equal to or greater than 7.1 millimeters then we want the design engineer to be warned. So we can use the message box property that we've got. Again, there on the left hand side, you can see that we've got options for message boxes, different types of message boxes. We can input the message that we want. So in this case, it's just a, a warning just to say that you've chosen a size that is too, too thick. It could be down to, you know, you can't get stock material that particular size or the cost is too prohibitive or the weight is going to be too too great um, by using anything above 7 millimeters. So again, rather than letting a design engineer make that error, why not proactively warn them that, you know, that they, they, they've chosen a size that is too large. Again, we just use the tools that we've got at our, our disposal with iLogic to quickly and easily automate this. So now let's go and see what happens when we change the, the thickness to something greater than 7.1 millimeters, so 8 millimeters, and there we go, we've got that thickness warning dialog, chosen a size that's too thick. Now just to make this a little bit easier and automate this a little bit, of, little bit further, the final thing that we're going to do is edit that rule so that when the dialog box is shown, when they click on OK, it actually sets the thickness back to 7 millimeters. So a design engineer will always have a thickness for that bracket of 7 millimeters or less. Again, it stops people creating errors inadvertently and automates the tasks within the design process, saving time, saving effort and saving money within the design process. That's iLogic for you. It's a great tool. 